A dog attacks and kills a child in Brooklyn. How it happened and why police say that family pet has a history. The warm weather hangs on overnight as we prepare for another day of dangerous heat and humidity. It combines fun and fitness, and best of all, it's free. New York Live has the spots you have to check out before summer is over. This is News 4 Now for August 11th. I'm Adam Cooperstein, and we're getting a reminder that summer is definitely not over with the heat and humidity. It's going to feel like 100 degrees, and today's not even the hottest day. Here's Storm Team 4's Rafael Miranda. We've got a warm night ahead. The heat is going to hang on, especially in the city, with temperatures gradually dropping down. Very muggy. No real relief from the heat. Look at the hour by hour forecast. We could have some showers and storms uh, throughout the evening, and then temperatures kind of hovering in the 80s throughout much of the night, barely making it down to the 70s by the end of the night into the morning. And again, you could see these spotty showers and storms uh, through dinner time, through the evening commute, where we do have rain. We could have some strong to severe storms. Wind damage will be the main threat. Everything should quiet down into tomorrow morning, Thursday, 6.30 a.m., a very warm start. And again, your low temperatures are part of the problem. That's why the heat's going to build back again Thursday afternoon. Temperatures will soar back into the 90s, and the A.C. stays on. You can see low temperatures close to 80 degrees, and it'll stay very muggy as well. In Brooklyn now, a 19-month-old boy is dead after police say he was killed by the family's Rottweiler. That child was bitten in the neck and shoulder by the dog, and that boy's father has been taken into police custody. News 4's Gabby Acevedo is in Flatbush with more, including the dog's previous history of attacks. It happened last night just before 11. Surveillance video shows two children running outside in the street asking for help. Police say they receive a 911 call of a child attacked by a dog inside an apartment in Flatbush. Yeah, this is the, this is the dog. This Citizen app video shows neighbors outside of the building, some desperately trying to understand how a family pet could have done such a thing. And we didn't think it was something happening in our building, so we didn't really come out until my older brother uh, went downstairs and saw what was happening. According to the NYPD, the 19-month-old boy was found with bite wounds to his neck and shoulder, heavily bleeding. Police sources say the dog also attacked his older brother and bit him in the leg two years ago. Maybe the parents thought it's going to protect them. They don't think one day they're going to attack the baby. It's sad. The dog appears to have been contained inside a separate room before police arrive, but no adult seems to have been present when the boys were attacked. It's horrible, and you, you could imagine uh, the responding officers, what they encountered. It's, it's a, a terrible situation, a uh, terrible situation for them and certainly for the family uh, that's affected by this tragedy. ESU personnel with the NYPD responded to the scene and took custody of the dog, who was then brought to animal care and control. Neighbors are in shock, wondering what should happen to the dog. You got to put that pet to sleep. Investigators are looking into a deadly penthouse fire in Queens. They say it was intentionally set and a man was found stabbed inside. It happened here on the sixth floor of this building on Woodside on Tuesday morning. Investigators say Anesti Bogoresti was found dead inside, stabbed multiple times. Four firefighters also were hurt, and because of the fire, 40 people can't return to their homes right now. The Red Cross is helping them out, and so far, no arrests have been made. Right now in Connecticut, two new mask mandates are going into effect in two of the state's biggest cities. Hartford and Bridgeport are going to require people to wear masks in indoor public places like bars, restaurants and shops to fight the spread of the Delta variant, even if you're vaccinated. Now, there's no statewide mandate, but Governor Lamont has given municipalities the authority to require masks if they want. Stanford's mask mandate goes into effect Thursday morning. Well, how would you like to have fun while getting a workout? And the price doesn't hurt either. It's free. New York Live has the spots you need to check out. It's been said that the best things in life are free, and we would agree, and that's exactly why today I'm teaming up with my girl, Christine Bibohara, to show you where you can get your free fitness on while taking in the best the city has to offer. Mm -hmm. Hi, Hi. Hi, You know I love all things fun and fitness related, so Bryant Park Lawn is the place to be on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. for free yoga. Warrior two, front of the house. Okay. And you know what else is a lot of fun? What? Roller skating. <gasps> so much fun. I love skate dates. Central Park on weekends has a skate rink. There's DJs, music, good vibes, good energy, and you're getting a workout. You don't even realize it. Before we head to our next location, yeah. what else you got for us? 
um, Shape Up NYC. It's all five boroughs, so something for everybody all over New York City. There's everything from Zumba to aerobics, boot camp, and more. All levels, all ages. So many free activities, so little time. Where are we headed to next? Let's go to Pier 26 and make a splash. Christine, this is one of my favorite things to do in the city. I'm so happy you brought me here. Oh my goodness, it's a gorgeous day. We are here at Pier 26 Boathouse and free kayaking. Can you believe it? No, at first I really couldn't believe this because they provide you with everything. Yes, you just have to be over 18 or with a legal guardian and you have to know how to swim. But other than that, they give you the lockers, the equipment, the locks, the sunblock, everything you need and they just want you to have a good time on the water. It's a great way to see the city. The whole family can do it and you get a workout too. I highly recommend this for anybody who's coming into the city. We should mention it's free on Wednesdays. It's also free on the weekends. And yes. then I, how many people have done this? Do you know? I think they said they put about half a million people on the water in the 25 years they've been operating, which is amazing. We should also point out this is run by volunteers, this whole thing. Yes, it, I mean, it's just such a great operation. And I didn't even really know about it until recently. And I can't believe it because I've been a New Yorker forever. <laughs> Can I tell you what I think one of the best parts about this is, other than the view? It's so much fun that you forget you're getting a workout. I know. This is a core workout, upper body. We're moving everything. This is my kind of workout. Christine, my girl, you delivered. So much fun. You have to check it out. Don't miss out. In 13 days, the spotlight shines on Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul as she makes history, becoming the first woman to lead New York State after Governor Cuomo resigns. She might not be a household name, but she is no newcomer to politics. Today, I'm going to take my shot. After standing in the shadows of Governor Cuomo for seven years, Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul is about to get her shot at running the state of New York. Hochul may not be a household name, but she's been around in state politics, developing a reputation for visiting every county by car every year as lieutenant governor. Regarding domestic violence awareness month. Born in Buffalo, Hochul grew up working class. For a while, she lived in an upstate mobile home park. They always brought us back here to remember where we came from, and that's something that always makes me empathize with people, part of who I am. Who she is started coming into focus at Syracuse, where she organized a boycott to encourage the university to divest from apartheid South Africa. She went to law school at Catholic University in DC, and it wasn't until age 35 that she ran for local office. Now's my time. So then it just, everything else since then, it's just been something that came my way and I seized it. Hochul served on the Hamburg Town Board, then became Erie County Clerk, before an upset win in a 2011 special election to become a member of Congress. After losing re-election, she was hand-picked by Governor Cuomo in 2014 to be his running mate. I, I was thrilled. I really was so excited about that opportunity. And this came and it's like, you know what, I still have more to give. I'm still in the public sector. I think I still have more to give. Hochul has championed causes like opioid abuse and college sexual assault. And when the allegations against Cuomo first surfaced, she took a wait-and-see approach. In February, she said, everyone deserves to have their voice heard and taken seriously adding she supports an independent review. Then, when the AG's investigation was released, she said, I believe these brave women and admire their courage coming forward. No one is above the law. Hochul will be sworn in officially on August 24th. And thank you so much for joining us here on News 4 Now. We'll see you tomorrow.